University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Defying the conventional laws of mathematics, we now enter the fifth quarter-final. By the end of tonight's match, we'll know the first of the four teams through to the semi-finals. Both teams will know that not all hope is lost, though, for the losers, because they'll get one final chance to qualify. The University of Newcastle are here after something of a walkover in round one against a team of somnambulists from Sheffield Hallam University. <laughs> the margin on that occasion was 170 points to 40. In round two, they beat a more alert team from the University of Southampton by 215 to 130. And in their first quarter final, they beat Bristol University by 225 points to 130. With an average age of 29, let's meet Newcastle for the fourth time. Hi, I'm Jack Reynard. I'm from Leeds and I'm studying medicine. I'm Molly Nielsen. I'm from London and I'm studying medicine. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Jonathan Noble. I'm from Newcastle upon Tyne and I'm studying for PGCE. Hello, my name is Adam Lowry. I'm from Sunderland and I'm reading chemistry. Now, the team from St John's College, Cambridge, beat Ulster University in the first of their quarterfinals, having already beaten the University of St Andrews and Corpus Christi College, Cambridge, in the first two rounds. So, with an accumulated score of 725 from three matches and with an average age of 23, let's meet the St John's team again. Hi, I'm John Clark Levin. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I'm studying for a PhD in politics and international studies. Hello, I'm Rosie McKeown. I'm from Kingston upon Thames in southwest London, and I'm studying French and German. And here's their captain. Hi, I'm James Devine Stoneman from Southall in West London, studying for a PhD in superconducting spintronics. Hi, I'm Matt Hazel from Ringwood in Hampshire, and I'm studying veterinary medicine. Well, the rules are pretty constant, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. Opened to the public in 1881, which building was Alfred Waterhouse's first major... Newcastle Noble. Is it Manchester Town Hall? No. I'm afraid you lose five points. First major work in London. Built in the Romanesque style with facades of terracotta, its entrance hall was for many years dominated by the cast of a skeleton of a diplodocus. St John's McKeown. The Natural History Museum. That is correct, yes. Right, biographical films for your bonuses. Firstly, for five points, the 2015 film Porn Sacrifice concerns which figure of the 20th century played by Tobey Maguire? His direct opponent in the film is played by Liev Schreiber. Bobby Fischer. Yeah, Bobby Fischer, maybe, yeah. 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 Bobby Fischer? Bobby Fischer is correct. The 2016 film Race is primarily based on which athlete played by Stephen James? In the same film... Jeremy Irons takes the role of Avery Brundage, the president of the United States Olympic Committee. Jesse Owens. Yeah. Yeah. Jesse Owens. Correct. Played by Ben Foster, who's the central character in Stephen Frears' 2015 film, The Programme. It's based on the journalist David Walsh's book, Seven Deadly Sins. Mm -hmm. He's an editor of the New York Times, maybe? I don't know. Possibly. I'm not going to get it. No, pass. It's Lance Armstrong. Ten points for this. A theory of the consumption function is a work by which leading proponent of monetarism, born in New York in 1912. The recipient of the 1976 Nobel Prize in Economics... Newcastle Noble. And Milton Friedman. Correct. <laughs> so your first bonuses, Newcastle, are on Nobel laureates. Born in Monmouthshire in 1872, who was awarded the 1950 Nobel Prize in Literature in recognition, quote, of writings in which he champions humanitarian ideals and freedom of thought. Bertrand Russell, I think. Yeah. Bertrand Russell? Correct. In 1955, Russell released a manifesto with which prominent scientist calling for the curtailment of nuclear weapons? The manifesto is referred to by their joint names. <sighs> Go on, what? Yeah, Go on. Do we go with that? Mm. We'll just go with that, I don't know. Oppenheimer. No, it's Einstein. It's the Russell Einstein Manifesto. And finally, based on the Russell Einstein Manifesto, which conference brings together scientists concerned about the proliferation of nuclear weapons? 
The first was held in 1957 in Nova Scotia, Canada. No, do we not know? No. Uh, pass, we don't know, sorry. It's Pugwash. Ten points for this. Which artist am I talking about here? Born in Romania, he studied in Paris under Rodin and was a prominent figure in the modernist movement. Characterised by a refined simplicity and elegance of form, his notable sculptures include The Endless Column and the series entitled Bird in Space. Newcastle Nielsen. Brancusi. Correct. Your bonuses are on astronomy, Newcastle. In each case, give the name from the description. All three answers begin with the same letter. Firstly, a dark nebula in Orion, about 1,300 light years distant. It's named after its resemblance to part of an animal. Horse head nebula? Correct, that gives you the lead. A large star cluster, secondly, in Taurus, that forms the letter V, along with the giant Aldebaran. Its name is the Greek for rainy ones. Um, the Hyades? Correct. And finally, a major moon of Saturn, noted for its irregular shape and eccentric orbit. It shares its name with a fragmentary epic poem by John Keats. Hyperion. Hyperion. Yeah. Hyperion. Correct. <laughs> We're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see the titles of three paintings by a single artist given in the original language. Ten points if you can name the artist. Newcastle Nielsen. Magritte. Magritte is correct. We'll see the titles in English now. So for your picture bonuses, three more sets of titles under which works of art were originally exhibited. I want the name of the artist in each case. Note that the language may not be the artist's own mother tongue. Firstly for five. I'm happy with that. Yeah, she could have done Dolly. Yeah. Hate any of these no. no. I think it's it's Dolly. Dolly. Yeah. Uh, Dolly? No, it's Giacometti. Here are the titles in English. And secondly. Kokoska. Kokoska? No. But it's worth a few, I guess, eh? Um, Kokoska? No, that's Kazimir Malevich. In English, those are the names that, uh, of the pieces. And finally... That's, that's Dali, isn't it? Yeah. Salvador Dali. Correct, yes. Let's see it in English. There we are. <laughs> Ten points for this. In late 2016, controlled explosions were carried out at several British schools after the discovery of possibly unsafe stocks of what common laboratory chemical? Often named after a... Newcastle Reynard. Phenol. Nope. You lose five points. Often named after a South African-born chemist, it is a reagent used to identify the carbonyl group. St John's Hazel. It's DMP. No, I don't think I can accept this. Brady's reagent, that's DMPH, I think. Right, ten points for this. Which range of mountains gives its name to the language family that includes Nenets, Finnish and Hungarian? St John's Macio. The Urals. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on animal sanctuaries in India. In each case, identify the state where the following are located. Firstly, Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary, known for its herds of elephants and located about 250 kilometres northeast of Trivandrum. Any feeling on that? Mm. Odisha? Maybe, yeah. Uh, Odisha? No, it's Kerala. Secondly, the Kanharam Bandavgar Tiger Reserves and the National Chambal Sanctuary. These are administered jointly with Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh for the conservation of the Ganges River dolphins, crocodiles and gharials. Something like Madhya Pradesh or maybe Gujarat, yeah. Is, Maybe, um, Gujarat, maybe. Gujarat? No, it's Madhya Pradesh. And finally, Kaziranga National Park on the bank of the Brahmaputra and Manas Wildlife Sanctuary near the border with Bhutan. Both are refuges for the endangered Indian one-horned rhinoceros. That's not really like Assam. Or Sikkim or yeah. Assam. That's Assam? Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Answer as soon as your name is called. 
Which historical polity is this? Its motto was Deo Vindici. Its only vice president was Alexander... St John's Levin. The Confederate States of America. That's correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on artists sponsored by Queen Christina of Sweden in the 17th century. Firstly, for five points, which Neapolitan composer established the form of the opera overture in three sections, Allegro, Adagio, Allegro? His son, Domenico, was a noted composer of keyboard sonatas. Scarlatti. Scarlatti. Correct. Which Italian violinist and composer pioneered modern orchestral direction, influenced the development of the violin style and popularised the concerto grosso? Is that Corelli or Vivaldi? A little bit early for Vivaldi, so go with Corelli. Corelli? Yeah. Corelli is correct. And finally, a leading exponent of the Baroque style of sculpture, whose works include the colonnade in front of St Peter's Basilica and fountains such as the Triton and the Four Rivers? So it's Benini. 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 Benini is correct. Ten points for this. What six-letter word links the title character of a novella of 1878 by Henry James, the narrator of the second of Chaucer's Canterbury Tales... Newcastle Noble. Miller. Miller is correct. <laughs> if we take the lead with these bonuses, they're on experiments that help to establish the theory of biogenesis. In 1668, the Italian physician Francesco Redi discredited which Aristotelian theory by demonstrating that maggots in putrefying meat come from eggs laid by flies? Spontaneous. Spontaneous generation. Correct. In 1767, which Italian scientist negated John Needham's conclusion that spontaneous generation was possible by repeating Needham's experiment in heat-sealed files? Italian. Oh, yeah. Italian. When's, when's Galvani around? Yeah, Galvani. Galvani, good shout. Galvani? No, it's Spallanzani. And finally, which French chemist's experiment of 1861 used a mixture of fermentable sugar and yeast in swan-necked flasked to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation? Pasteur. Pasteur. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Known for his dictum, to be is to be the value of a variable, which US logician and philosopher published over... St John's Levin. Purse. No, you lose five points. Published over 20 books, including Quiddities, an intermittently philosophical dictionary, and the 1960 work, Word and Object. Doesn't look as if any of you is going to buzz from Newcastle, no. It's W.V. Quine. Ten points for this. What common name is given to arboreal apes of the genus Hylobates, native to Southeast Asia? They have long arms, no tails, and a throat sack. St John's Divine Stoma. Orangutan. No, you lose five points. And a throat sack used for amplifying Newcastle sound. Newcastle Lowry. How the monkey. No, they're gibbons. Ten points for this. Which two letters link the German engraver known as the Master of 1466, the chemical element with atomic number 99... St John's McKeown. AD. No, you lose five points. And the internet domain of the country that won the FIFA World Cup in 2010. Newcastle Lowry. D-E. No, it's E-S. Ten points for this. Chula Longcorn, or Rama V, was a reforming monarch... St John's Levin. Thailand. Thailand is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on battle, St John's. In each case, identify the location from the description. All three names begin with the same three letters. Firstly, perhaps the first major naval battle recorded in history, the Greek fleet under Themistocles defeated the larger fleet of the Persian king Xerxes in 480 BC? Salamis. Nominate Levin. Salamis. Correct. Secondly, a battle of the Peninsular Wars in 1812. The Duke of Wellington's army is said to have defeated 40,000 Frenchmen in 40 minutes. Salamanca. Yeah. Salamanca. Correct. And finally, on the 9th of September 1943, Allied troops invaded mainland Italy at which location? just south of Naples as part of Operation Avalanche. Salerno. Um, nominate Levin. Salerno. Salerno is correct. We take another starter question now. <laughs> Having discovered it in 1957, which German physicist gives his name to the phenomenon of recoil-free gamma-ray resonance absorption? St John's Divine Stone. Mossbauer. Mossbauer is correct. You get a set of bonuses now. <laughs> On a chemical element, 
Apatite is a general class of mineral that is the major source for which group 15 element, widely used in the manufacture of fertilisers? So it's phosphor phosphorus. Phosphorus is correct. Secondly, what term denotes any member of a class of compounds consisting of nitrogenous base linked to a sugar and a phosphate group? They're found in all living matter. So is that pentose or... What is it? Um, no pentose. No, it's nucleotide. And finally, parathion and malathion are organic phosphorus compounds. What is their most common use? So not fertilizer. In matches, do they in match yeah, in matches, matches. Yeah, in matches. No, they're insecticides or pesticides. Right, we're going to take a music round now. If you're a music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music by an Austrian composer. For ten points, if you can give me the name of the composer, please. Newcastle Noble. No, Todd? No, St John's, you may hear a little more. St John's McKeown. Haydn. Haydn is correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the palindrome minuet. It was an example of a true musical palindrome where the entire second half of the movement is an exact mirror image of the first. Your music bonus is three more works constructed with the help of palindromes. Five points for each composer you can name. Firstly, this British composer. Sweet night, I think it? I'll, I'll go with Talis. Should I go with Talis? Mm. Talis? No, it's William Byrd. Oh. Mm. Secondly, this Austrian composer. Schoenberg? Schoenberg, probably. Yeah. Schoenberg? No, it's Alban Berg mm. from Lulu. And finally, this composer. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Andrew Johnson in 1865, Chester Arthur in 1881, Theodore Roosevelt in 1901, and Lyndon Johnson in 1963. Newcastle Reynard. Succeeded a dead president? Nope. Uh, you lose five points. Are the only four US presidents to date to have succeeded to the office following what specific event? St John's Levin. The assassination of a US president. That's correct, yes. Right, your bonuses are on shutdowns of the United States federal government, St John's. Firstly, funding gaps caused five partial shutdowns in the 1970s during the presidency of which Democrat? Uh, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Correct. Who was the Republican Speaker of the House during the two federal shutdowns of 1995 and 96? He ran for the Republican nomination for president in 2012. Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich. Correct. In which year during Barack Obama's presidency was a shutdown caused principally by partisan dispute over the Affordable Care Act? Is that 2013? <sighs> or 14? It was about then. I think 13? I, I, I think it was actually earlier. Oh, and yeah. The years are all, all running together, but I'm going to say 20... Eleven. Okay, I'll go. With 2011. 2011. No, it's 2013. Oh, Ten points for this. Two of the three men listed as the favourites of the title character in the Dramatis Personae of Shakespeare's Richard II share their names with royal parks in London. Name both of them. St John's Levin. Pistol. And no. <laughs> Anyone like to have a go from Newcastle? Newcastle Nielsen. Hyde and. No, it's bushy and green. <laughs> right, ten points for this. In human anatomy, what term denotes the serous membrane that encases the visceral organs and lines the abdomen? Newcastle Nielsen. Peritoneum. Correct. 
Your bonuses are on a Queen of England, Newcastle. Written in the, the 1040s, the Encomium M.I. Reginae is a work in praise of Emma of Normandy. Name either of the two kings to whom she was married. Ethelred the Unready? That's correct, yes. The other one was Canute. Which son of Emma and Canute became king in 1040 after the death of his half-brother, Harold Harefoot? Half of Canute. It was half of Canute, wasn't it? Was it the was it, was it son of... Was it the son of Emma and... Um, Emma the Confessor? Emma and... Yeah, sorry, yeah. Do you want the hair foot? No, good. Yeah. Hearth the Canute? Hearth the Canute is correct. Which son of Emma and Ethelred succeeded to the English throne in 1042? Uh, Edward the Confessor. Correct. We're going to take another picture down now. If your picture starts, you'll see a painting. Ten points if you can identify the artist, please. St John's McKeown. Uh, John Singer Sargent. That's correct. It's his famous First World War picture, Gas. One of a series commissioned by the British War Memorials Committee in 1918 to uh, act as a record and memorial. Your picture bonuses are three more of these commissions, all of by British artists. I just need the name of each artist for the points. Firstly, for five. Mm. Got nothing on that. Don't know anyone who painted about no. style. You could guess Duncan Grant, but I don't think that was his kind of... Duncan Grant? Yeah. Duncan Grant? No, it was Percy Wyndham Lewis. Mm. And secondly... There was a Paul Nash, but he... That was... I don't know one painting by him. Mm. But, you know, you could guess. Paul Nash. That is Paul Nash. It's probably <laughs> his most famous painting, in fact, in The Men in Road. And finally... Could that be Augustus John or someone? He's Augustus John. He's a painter from that period. I don't know. Augustus John. Yeah, go with British. It's Augustus John. Oh, it's Stanley Spencer. Oh. Ten points for this. Etymologically related to the Latin for nest, the word nide is most commonly used in relation to which game birds? They feature prominently in Roald Dahl's work, Danny the Champion of the World. Newcastle Reynard. Pheasant. Pheasant is correct, yes. <laughs> You get a set of bonuses on physics now, Newcastle. Which six-letter term denotes the addition of impurities into a semiconductor in order to change its electrical properties? Doping. Correct. What term designates undoped semiconductors that have no impurities present? Anything? Uh, sorry, we don't know. It's intrinsic. What letter of the alphabet designates extrinsic semiconductors in which the dopant atom provides extra conduction electrons? P. P? No, it's N. Four minutes to go, ten points for this. Why doesn't he use a spoon? Which Irish politician made that response to Lloyd George's accusation that negotiating with him was like trying to pick up mercury with a fork? Uh, St John's Hazel. James Connolly. No. Newcastle Noble. De Valera. De Valera is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Connolly had been shot by then. Uh, right, your bonuses now are on events of the 20th century as summarised by the 1989 Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire. In each case, name the year to which the line refers, Newcastle. First, Eisenhower, vaccine, England's got a new queen. 1953. No, it's 1952. No. Secondly, Hemingway, Eichmann, Stranger in a Strange Land. 1960. I don't know. Yeah. 1960? It's 1961. <laughs> Finally, Moonshot Woodstock. 68. 68. 69. 1969. Correct. Ten points for this. What name is thought to derive from the Spanish for toasted in reference to its most common colour and is given to a cotton twill often used to make trousers? Newcastle Noble. Tostado. No, anyone like to buzz St. John's there? Divine Stoneman. Crew? No, it's Chino. Ten points no. for this. In the biochemistry of glycolysis, what is the full name of the intermediary compound PEP? Newcastle Reynard. Phosphoenol pyruvate. Correct.
Right, these bonuses are on the south coast of England. Which four-letter word appears in the names of several promontories on the south coast, including Rame in Cornwall and Durlston and Hengisbury in Dorset? Head. Correct. The word bill particularly refers to two promontories on the south coast. One is Portland Bill in Dorset. What's the other in West Sussex between Portsmouth and Bognor Regis? Anything? Sorry, we don't know. That's Selsey. The coastal feature called Hope's Nose is a promontory located at the edge of which resort town in Devon? Devon. Torquay. Torquay, is that Devon? Yeah, Torquay. Torquay is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Listen carefully, answer promptly. Of the US states whose names begin with the word new, which two are contiguous? St John's McKeown. New York and New Jersey. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on unit conversion, St John's. In each case, I'll give the SI conversion factor. I want you to give me the standard unit equivalent. Firstly, 10 to the minus 7 joules. So much. No. So, 100. We need an answer here. Um, calorie. <laughs> No, it's erg. <laughs> Next, approximately 1,055 joules. Yeah. Calorie? No. no, it's a BTU, British Thermal Unit. And finally, 4.1868 joules. That's a calorie. Yeah. <laughs> calorie. It is a calorie, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. Answer in Latin, French or English, giving the brief dictum that is the starting point of the theory of knowledge described in the 1637... St John's McKeown. I think, therefore, I am. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on first symphonies. In each case, the answer is a German or Austrian composer. Firstly, which composer's symphony number no. one in D major was first performed in Budapest in 1889 to a generally unsympathetic response? Bruckner. Bruckner. Yeah. Bruckner. No, it's Mahler. Which composer's symphony number no. one in B flat major was well received on its 1841 <laughs> premiere? And at the wrong, Newcastle have 135. <laughs> St George's College, Cambridge, have 160, though. <laughs> well, Newcastle, bad luck. You led for part of the match, and you were very, very close until just those last couple of minutes. <laughs> You're going to have to play again, I'm afraid, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, you yes. are under these very, very complicated, cruel rules. <laughs> uh, St John's, many congratulations. You're the first team to go through to the semi-finals. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> well, I hope you can join us next time for another quarter-final match, but until then, it's goodbye from Newcastle University. Goodbye. It's goodbye from St John's College, Cambridge. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>